Come on, y'all get ready and just put your hands together. We're going to worship him and praise him this morning. Amen. Come on, put your hands together.
know, God is all that we ever need. He's our source. He's our place of healing. He's our place of blessing. And so I just want to invite you this morning, just forget about everyone in this room that's here. Forget about whatever you came in here with, whatever baggage you came in here with. And I just want to encourage you to enter into worship this morning. That's where your blessing is. That's where your breakthrough is. So just close your eyes and lift your hands. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my soul. Let the King of my heart be the ransom for my life.
y'all doing this morning we're so glad you're with us here we're so glad and i believe that this morning we can encourage you we can strengthen you i believe god wants to do something in your life uh this morning i want to talk to you about god's plan or god's dream for your life god's plan god's dream for your life uh in the book of jeremiah 29 jeremiah 29 it reminds me so much of the address of our church. Our church is on 2911 Gunsmoke. And every time someone preaches on Jeremiah, it reminds me, you know, of what God has for us and the plan that God has for you and me. So I want to talk to you about that this, this morning. Uh, in Jeremiah 2911, it says, For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. There's two two points that I want to make before I make my main number one point is the first thing that God is saying here, God's dream for you, number one, is personal. God is, is talking in a personal way. For I know the plans I have for you. It's talking about you. It's talking about me. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. It's very personal, very personal talking to you. And I believe this morning I'm going to encourage someone because this is the Word of God. The Word of God is so powerful and, and God is, is, is so personal. And the second point that I want to make here from the very beginning you know, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. It's not only personal, but it is, it is so positive. It is so positive. God has plans for you, but God has plans that he's going to bless us. He's going to touch us. He's going to strengthen us. He's not going to harm us. God has a plan or a dream that is very positive for us. Very positive for us. So the first point that I want to make, what does it take? How can I fulfill this? How can I do this? You know, if God has a plan for me, how can I do this? Well, right before I go to the, the first point that I want to make, I want us to go before the Lord in prayer. I want you to just open your heart. I want you to prepare your heart and say, God, touch me. Give me direction, you know. Strengthen me. Whatever you need this morning, I want God to do something with your life. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, I believe, Father God, that there's somebody out there, Father, that needs your strength. They need a touch from, from you, God. And God, that we know that you are a personal God and you are positive. And Father, we sent the word, Father, Flow through me today. Touch me today. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first thing, number one point that I want to make is how do I do this? Number one is dedicate all my life to God. Dedicate 
all my life to God. And that's one thing that, you know, is hard for anybody to do that. Uh, most, of the, most, most people know my background, know my testimony, where I come from. Uh, I used to own nightclubs, be around and, you know, dealing drugs and stuff like that. And it was, it was a hard change that I had to make. But when God came and was so personal to my life, when God came to me and it was so personal to me, you know, it helped me. And it's going to take God to touch you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you're serving the Lord. Maybe you have given your life to God and you've been away from the Lord. But I believe it is time for you to come back, you know, and dedicate your whole life to God. Uh, the scripture says in, in Romans 12, 1, you know, it says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. See, God, you got to be willing, you know, you got to be willing to do whatever God wants to do with our life. You know, most people, you know, is wanting to serve God, but they're holding on to other things. They're holding on to things that are, are keeping them from going forward, you know, from serving God. So that's why he says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Dedicate to his service. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. It is easy. I had conformed myself to the standards of this world. I had a nightclub that people used to stand in line, wanted to go in. And, you know, I mean, honestly, people were in line to get in. You know, that's where everybody wanted to be. But to me, I wanted out. I wanted to get out. And when God touched my life, was so personal and came and told me, that he had some pl other plans for, for me, for my life, you know, it was hard to let go. It was hard to let go. I want to share some things this morning, you know, how you can just be free and set free from what the enemy has kept you, you know, from, from going forward with the Lord. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world, but let God transform you you got to be able to let God transform you God wants to do something in your life he wants to transform you he wants to change you then you will be able to know the will of God the will of God I thought that I was supposed to be out there in the world getting people drunk getting people high you know and the next thing I knew, people, I saw evil before me. That's what made me turn to the Lord. And right now, we're seeing so much things. We're seeing this virus. We're seeing all these things that are coming against us. All these things that are attacking people. You know, but you got to be able to, be, to turn to the Lord. Be able to turn to God. You know, uh, also in Hebrews 12.1 says, Let us strip off anything that, show, that slow us down. Anything that slow us down. You know, I mean, so many people can't believe that I was able to walk away from all that. Walk away. And, and, and it wasn't me. It was God touching me. It was God you know, giving me the strength that I needed needed to go forward. Let us strip off anything. I was able to say, you know what? I cannot live this life, be out in the, in the world, be out in the clubs and trying to make all this money and be in the drugs and serve God. You cannot do that. You know, you got to serve one master. You got to serve, you know, either God or the devil. The devil is out there. You know, but there's also God. God is out there, you know, reaching out to us today. So let us strip off anything that slows us down or hold us back 
And let us run with patience the race that God has before us. There's a race. We're running a race. We're running a race. And people, in that race, the enemy will do everything to try to stop us, to hold us back so that we will not fulfill the dream that God has for us, that we will not fulfill the plans that God has for us. He is telling us, you know, I know the plans that I have for you, and there are plans to prosper you, you know, and not to harm you, you know, and to give you some hope, you know. So wherever you're at, I want to tell you today, if you will dedicate if you will dedicate and give everything to the Lord, you know, I mean, we're going through a lot of things. A lot of people going through so many things. But God is still God. God is in the throne. God is in control. God will help us through whatever you're at, wherever you're at. God will do that, whether it's your marriage, you know, or whether it's your family, or whether it's your finances, you know, or whether it's something physical, you know, you need healing in your body. God is able. God is still God. It doesn't matter what the enemy does, what the devil means for evil. God will turn it to the good. God will turn it to the good. And that's what God wants to do here this morning. So we got to be able to dedicate. We got to be able to, to let go, you know, and let God do what he wants to do. Because the enemy will use anything that he can. You know, and many times, we, you know, we, we want to blame God. God, why didn't you come through? And God, No, the enemy uses, you know, whatever you sow, you will reap. I sowed a lot of things in the world. And so the enemy knew that he can come back and use all everything that he can so he can hold us back. And today, you know, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your family. God has a future for you and for us. You know, God is here. You know, I don't know, you know, if you're praying for your, your children. I don't know if you're praying for a wife or for a husband. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. I've been serving God for about 40 years now. You know, it blesses me. You know, where I get so, so blessed, I have five children, you know, and praise God because th they are all in the house of God. You know, some, you know, or most of them are, are, are married. Their spouses, children, their children, who are my grandchildren, great-grandchildren are in the house of God. And it blesses me. So I get to look back and say, man, it was worth it to be able to let go of where I was. I couldn't see it back then. Forty years ago, you know, you want to have all this prestige and, and people around you and all these things, but people, it is worth it to let go. I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what's holding you back, but be able to do that. Be able to give God everything. So dedicate all your life to the Lord. Dedicate all your life, not just part of you, not just this. You know, I want to hold on to one thing. You can't do that. You only can serve God with all your heart. The Bible says love God with all your heart. And that's what God wants to do that. The number two thing that we need to do is reserve time alone with God. You know, once when I came to the Lord, I got saved. I realized that I had to reserve some time with the Lord. We have to put things aside and say, you know what? I am getting up early in the morning, you know, and this time I am giving it to God. You know, I know I have a job. I have responsibility. We have other things to do. But we have to know how to reserve time with the Lord, you know, People, I mean, most people, you know, get upset and blame God and God, you didn't come through and God, you no, no, no. God works according to your heart, according to how you surrender. Anytime that anything happens 
Don't blame God. Blame yourself. Put the finger on yourself and say, what have I done? Or what haven't I done? Why haven't, what haven't I surrendered? You know, and so, you know, we have to be able to be in submission to God. Surrender and give everything to the Lord. So we have to reserve. In, in Job 37, 14 says, pause for a moment and listen Consider the wonderful things God does. We have to see. Now, I remember my dad. My dad passed away uh, four years ago. He's in heaven now. But he used to tell me, you know what? You know, I can look back and realize, you know, I didn't know what he was talking about then. You know, I was young in my 20s and 30s. And he used to say, I can look back and I can look my life and say, I should have done this, or I should have done that, or I'm glad I did this, and I did that. And now I realize, now that I'm at that age now, in my 60s, and be able to say, is it, wow, I, gotta, I can look back and say, I am so glad. You know, look what God has done. Look what God has done. God is so awesome. God is so fantastic, you know. And he does things. I see him do things, you know, with my kids. I mean, they are, have grown up and they've gone through some things. And I seen God bring them out of some things. And that blesses me. And, and that's why you cannot stop trusting in the Lord. You cannot stop trusting in God. So it says you cannot get God's dream unless you spend time with God. You got to make some time with the Lord. Make some time. Put some time. You know, and, you know, it's important. It's, it's no different, you know, like a, than a marriage. The same thing with my wife. I mean, we've been married probably about 50 years now, you know, and it's because we have spent time together. You know, you know, put things down and, and spend time together. It is no different with God. You know, God wants to do something in your life. God wants to do something in, in, in if it's your, your, your wife you're praying for, your husband you're praying for, your children you're praying for. You can't tell me that God can't move because I've seen him move in all my children, relatives, grandchildren, you know, all around I mean, you know, but you got to surrender everything to God. You got to be able to give everything to God. You got to be able to say, this time is the Lord's. I am going to make some time. I am going to get in the word of God. I am going to read the word of God. I am going to pray. I want to be sensitive to the spirit of God. I want to be sensitive you know, I mean, when we had, you know, this building here, I mean, you know, we used to pray here at 6 in the morning. There was nothing in this property here. And we used to come pray at 6 in the morning, you know, for years and years, you know, and, you know, spend time and give time to the Lord. And that's what it's going to take. You're, you're praying for your marriage. Hey, you know, spend time with God. Is, you know, you're praying for your finances, you're praying for your family, you're praying for your, 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 your finances, you know. God is able to take care of all of that. You know, another thing is be able uh, to evaluate my abilities. In Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's uh, handiwork created in Christ Jesus to devote ourselves to the good deeds for which God has designed us. God has given each of you some special abilities to be sure to use them to help others. See, God, you know, we love God, but we got to love people. We love God, but we got to love others. We got to love our neighbor. You know, God changes us. God helps us. But to be able to reach out and help others, you know, those that are next to you, those that are running, we're running a race. And there are some people that are maybe not as strong as you are, but we got to be able to help them up and, you know, and pray for them and pray for one another, you know, and, 
you know, and people, you know, can hurt us. But we got to forgive. We got to let it go. God, you know, is able to come and touch us, you know, and God wants to be able to evaluate us and be able to use our abilities. That's what he wants us to do. Use your abilities. And another thing, number four, is associate with godly dreamers. You know, people, you know, I mean, you know, I know that people go through things and, you know, but we got to be able to know how to use God's word, you know, to change us. We, we cannot stay in the, in the way we were. I mean, yes, God is taking us out from situations. Nobody's perfect, you know, but we every day we got to seek God so God can help us, you know, with our abilities to be able, you know, to hang out with the right person, you know, and let's, let's try to help one another, but also let's try to identify those that want to change, those that are honest with their heart and surrender themselves to the Lord. So this, this morning, you know, my prayers are for you to where you're at. Don't let nothing stop you from the plans that God has for your life. Don't let nothing, I don't care what it is, don't let anything stop you from the dream that God has for you and your family and your children. God wants to save them. People, we're going to live forever somewhere in eternity. And people, we got to get right here on earth. You know, it's, it's not time. Some, the other day, somebody called and, and he says, hey, we got to get serious. And we got to, you know, I said, my God, you know, I'm so glad that, that you're waking up. You know, someone that I had not seen in a long time. You know, you know, he was being concerned after many years not, you know, being away from God. He's realizing, you know, he says, I got to do something with my children. I said, wonderful. That's great. That's what God wants us to do, you know, to reach out and to help somebody else, especially the loved ones that God has given us. So, you know, so today I want to encourage you. God is able to help you to let go whatever it is, the virus, whatever is attacking you. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Everything has to bow to the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. So I am so glad that you were able to be here with us today, you know, and, and, uh, and, and we are going to be praying for you. You know, hope you got encouraged this morning, you know, because God has a plan for you and your family. Let me pray very quickly in the name of Jesus. Just send the word to you today. I send God's word for God will, because he used to, you know, the word of God says, I send the word so there can be healing in the land, healing in your house, healing in your family, healing in your marriage, healing in your finances. In Jesus' mighty name, I come against the spirit of the world, the spirit of sickness, of infirmity. I come against it, you know, in Jesus' mighty name. I speak blessings in your household. I speak blessings in your home. In Jesus' mighty name, I give you praise, God, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. You know, we see you next time. God bless.